What's up everybody? That's Dem Guy here. Today we are going to be reviewing the TTS B bot. So let's find out if this little bot is right for your students or child. Okay, so we're gonna start with what comes in the box. So, not a whole lot. Obviously, you're getting yourself a B-Bot. The only other things that are gonna be in this box are instructions and a charging cable for your bot. So, not a whole lot going on, very simplistic, but obviously, the big ticket item here is our B-Bot. Okay, so let's talk about B-Bot. Uh, B-Bot is a robot that is marketed for ages three and up. Um, this is a great introductory coding bot for pre-K through about second grade. After that, kids are going to age out of it a little bit, um, and it may be a little bit too simplistic. I think you can get away with it with third graders or even fourth graders if you have an engaging enough activity or it's your student's first time um, working with coding or robotics, but it is geared towards our younger makers, our younger coders, um, those pre-K through about second grade. So the bot itself is a very cute and simplistic design. It is shaped and painted like a cute little bumblebee. So on the back of the robot, we have seven buttons. We have forward one step, backwards one step, turn left, turn right, go, clear, and pause. That's it, seven buttons. Uh, so it's really accessible for young students. Uh, a step for Bebot is about six inches. So if you press forward one step, your Bebot will drive forward about six inches. Um, turning left and turning right spins Bebot on its axis. It doesn't actually send it in that direction. Um, and that's something that your coders and your makers and your students are going to have to adapt to and learn, and, and they'll pick it up pretty quick. So when they enter their code, if they want Bebot to turn left and they press turn left, Bebot will spin on its axis. It will not start traveling left. If they press left twice, it's going to spin on its axis once, twice, and show them it's behind. Um, if students want their Bebot to start going left after they turn it, they have to hit turn left and then forward however many steps, which will turn it and send it forward. The clear button essentially erases everything that you told Bebot. Um, I like to tell my students that after they input a code and they send Bebot on its way to get in the habit of hitting clear because inputs stack with Bebot. So that means if you tell Bebot to go forward two steps and then turn right and you don't hit clear and then you tell it to go right again forward two steps, it's going to go forward two steps, turn right, turn forward two steps and then turn right. So it's going to remember the original code and then all the new stuff which can get confusing for younger students. So uh, train your students to get in the habit of after they input a code and it gets to where they want to hit the clear button and then it will forget. But it is useful if students are trying to get to a certain direction and they come up like one space short, then they can just hit that forward button one more space, put it back where they started and then hit go without having to recode it all. So as your students get more comfortable using Bebot, that stacking of the code feature um, will actually come in handy for some of them. The pause button is very pointless on this robot. Um, all pause does is it makes Bebot wait at a certain spot for an extra second. Now I've come up with some activities that use the pause button, um, but it's, it's just not super practical and students, when they start out with the robot, will get very confused and think that pause is gonna stop it. And so if it's driving and it's not doing something that they want, they hit pause and nothing happens um, because that's not what pause does. Pause just slows it down between movements. If you hit, press the go button, that is what stops it. So go starts it and go stops it. Um, so pretty simplistic buttons on the back of the robot. On the bottom of the robot, we have a couple features that I wanna point out. We have a battery door. Um, I always tell my students to get in the habit of making sure that that screw is nice and tight, that it's not wobbly. If it is, let me know so I can tighten it. And you'll just use a little torque screwdriver for that. Um, we also have a charging port. And then we have three on off buttons. Um, or three switch buttons, I should say. So the first is on off of the robot. You'll know your robot's on when his eyes light up. And the other two are Bluetooth and sound. Um, sound is just little beeps that Bebot will make. Very helpful for the students and they love the little sounds. You can also record your own sounds, which I will show you in another video with some Bebot tips and tricks that I'm planning to record a little bit later on. Uh, the Bluetooth button, 
it doesn't the instructions say it's really meant for making sure the bots don't collide and just kind of pick up on the frequency or whatever um, and they'll kind of auto pause if, if they're getting too close to another robot um, I haven't we've had the robots next to each other I haven't really seen that work so I'm not really entirely sure what the Bluetooth button on these bots do I know on the blue bot which is a more advanced version of this robot Bluetooth is really important because the app connects to the robot whereas the Bbot app does not connect to the robot the Bbot app is just totally in independent um, and it's just kind of a an additional you know supplement to to coding with Bebop but it has nothing to do with the robot so a good thing with this robot is it's accessible you do not need to have tablets you do not need to have phones there is no app associated with it everything is done on the robot itself so if you've been following along on my channel and you've watched any of my product reviews in the past you know I grade on three criteria versatility, durability, and fun factor. Now with Bebop, versatility, I'm gonna give it a seven. If you're a creative teacher, versatility on this thing is a 10. But it does require a little bit of thought outside the box to keep coming up with new lessons and new activities and new challenges um, for the students to come up with and attempt with their Bebop. So if you're not really in the mood to come up with a lot of ideas. Um, I'm sure you can find a bunch of resources online, but it does it is gonna limit your versatility with it um, because you're gonna kind of be doing the same thing, rinse and repeat time after time, and the kids are gonna get bored with it. Um, so that can go either way. You know, versatility on this thing could be a two if you're not a creative person, could be a 10 if you're a creative person. So I think seven is kind of a good middle ground because just out of the box, there is enough that you should be able to come up with in your mind to engage your students and keep them busy with this robot for a couple class periods. All right, next is durability. Um, I'm gonna give durability on Bebop a nine. So we have had these in the lab now um, since the fall. It is now the fourth quarter. Uh, they are used a lot. I use them with every single K, one and two class. Um, they're used for about 45 minutes per class, you know, three hours-ish a day um, for a whole week, and they are in great shape. Um, I've had kindergartners and first graders drop them from their you know, waist height. They hit the ground, they bounce, and they're, they're, they don't even get a scratch on them. So um, they really did a good job making the shell of the robot durable and um, really did a good job even protecting the wheels um, from being too exposed. So durability is, is really high on this. Now, I want to be fully transparent. I did have one robot that randomly it won't make sounds anymore. So the sound button, even if it's turned on, doesn't work. I reached out to the company, I emailed them. They just haven't got back to me at all. It's been a couple weeks now. Um, so customer service on these things might not be the best. Um, you might be kind of getting what you get and that's kind of it. Um, and for a $100 price point without having great support from the company, you kind of weigh your options with it. Um, but I can live with a Bebop losing sound. Um, as long as all of the coding buttons work and it still moves appropriately. So um, durability, I'm giving these a nine because I've seen them drop and I've seen them bounce and I see them get right back to what they were doing um, without a hitch. So durability is a nine for me. And last we have fun factor. Um, fun factor is very, very, very similar to versatility. It really depends on how creative you are as a teacher or as a parent or as a homeschool cohort or as an after school program coordinator. It depends on your creativity. If you're a creative person, your kids are going to love this thing. If you come up with creative challenges and creative activities for them, it's a 10. If you're not that much of a creative person, you're like, here's Bebop, do something with it. The kids are going to get bored really, really, really quick. So I'm going to go with a seven again. The kids, when they see Bebop in my room, they freak out. They're like, Bebop! And they get so excited and so happy and so um, pumped up to code their little bot and send it on its way. But I'm a pretty creative guy. Not to toot my own horn, but I'm a pretty creative guy. So uh, I come up with fun things for them to do with it so that every time is a little bit different. And it's not like, oh, I did this before. Um, so every experience is new when they use the robot. But, uh, you know, if you keep it fun, it will be fun. So uh, with that being said, my final score for Bebop is a 7.66. Um, it's a recommend for me, it's a buy. If you are a STEM teacher and you're a science teacher, a technology teacher, um, you run an after school program, you're a homeschool parent, 
you have a homeschool co cohort, you just want to get your child involved in robotics and coding uh, at a young age, this thing is great. There are a ton of clones on the market, cheaper versions like little mouses. You know, I haven't used them. I can't speak to the durability of them. I can't speak to how well they perform, uh, but I can speak to Bbot, and I know that this bot is going to last you. Um, it's gonna be worth the investment, um, and, and it's, it's gonna be as fun for your students or your kids as you make it to be. Um, and it's really something that they can get a lot of use out of and really start to practice those critical thinking, problem solving, and communication skills, which are the basis of coding, um, and then eventually take this into computers onto Scratch and um, you know see wherever it takes them. So uh, I think this is a great buy. Um, I highly recommend it for your classroom. It's adorable. Bebot's great. Um, so if you like this video, please like and subscribe. I will put the link to where I got this in the chat um, or in the description box below. I'm sorry, and you can you know check it out and. and Order it if, if you think it's right for you. So that's all I got today. No matter where your classroom is located at around the world, I hope that you are having a great day. Please make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.